Well, hello, Facebook. Um, I don't have a fancy intro like Marcus and Kevin do, so while we're waiting for people to come in, if you want to go ahead and share this uh, so that other people can tune in and watch, that would be fantastic. Um, I'm going to do the same because I practice what I preach. So I'm going to go ahead and share this on my page and get more people on board. Um, what we're going to be talking about today is in the absence of Marcus and Kevin. I'm sure you are wondering, what are Marcus and Kevin doing? That's a philosophical question I ask myself on a routine basis, but today the answer is pretty easy. Marcus and Kevin are out on the Jesus Freak cruise with DC Talk. Uh, they are hopefully capturing some really fun content that you're going to see in the days ahead. Um, I'm sure they're having a fantastic time. It's a very well-earned vacation, and in the meantime, I am holding down the fort. For those of you who don't know who I am, I'm our associate editor. I am not based in Boise, which is where Marcus and Kevin live. I am our Nashville outpost, if you will. I do events around here. This is my home office, so Usually, I'm with all of you guys in the comments, heckling Marcus and Kevin mercilessly while they do the live broadcast, but I figured, since they're out, uh, I would take some time to talk with you guys about something that I care a lot about and that I thought you guys might have some ideas on, too. So absolutely, feel free to chime in at any point on this. This is, I don't have a co-host unless you count this Amberlynn poster behind me, so I need your help. Uh, I'm making this a two-way conversation. So first of all, just feel free to tell me if you're watching, if you can hear me fine. I don't do this kind of thing very often, so I need your input to make sure that y'all are there and uh, can actually see and hear me. So I'm just going to start out by talking about the subject that I'm discussing today is ideas that I have learned over the years for ways that you can better partner with the bands to support their ministry, to support the music that they're doing, to actually have both practical and maybe spiritual ways to actually support what they're doing and be, like partner with them in their ministry because that's something that we get to do as music listeners and fans which I am uh, I am all of us at NRT are fans as well as doing the job that we do we are definitely not exempt from that category and I actually um, over the years I've helped run a band's street team and I've learned a lot in the process of doing that and I've heard a lot from bands about what actually helps them so again, if you have any ideas or any questions, sound it off in the comments. Otherwise, I'll just share some of the notes that I have kind of taken down uh, over like 10 years of being involved with this stuff. And the first one is really simple. Um, Facebook does not always show everybody everything that artists post, which you probably know. There are things called algorithms where Facebook tries to decide who gets to see different things. So one of the biggest things that you can do to help out bands that you love is actually just comment and like their posts because what you're doing when you do that is you're telling Facebook this post is really important so uh, that way Facebook knows that they're going to be showing it to more people so if like you see a band and they like your favorite band posts say even something like a tour announcement and you like that post the more people who like that the more people Facebook's going to show it to and it's going to be a snowballing effect and that way more people are actually going to like see it sometimes it might be even a post that you feel like oh I already knew that I already knew the band was releasing a new music video it's worth it to like it anyway because even if you had that information and just kind of want to keep scrolling by somebody else might not so it's an actually extremely helpful thing to a band if you just interact with it um, and again, that seems like a small thing, but it actually makes a really big difference. Um, I completely agree, Joshua. Sharing on Facebook, like not just commenting on their stuff, but sharing on your own page is a huge deal too. Like especially say if a band is releasing new music or if they have a Kickstarter campaign running, like so many bands now rely on uh, word of mouth and the market is so saturated and social media is so loud that if you can get your voice out there supporting them uh, and share actually like on your personal page as well as interacting with them and what they post it makes a huge difference and that's something that takes us you know like no time at all but can actually make a very real and tangible difference in a band's life and how well their music is going to be getting in front of people and things like that so again it like takes us seconds but it really really does make a difference one thing I would add, though, is probably if you're going to be like commenting on a band's post, usually make sure 
you check their tour dates first because a lot of the time half the post comments on a band's post is when are you coming to X city um, and half the time people commenting that are after the band has just been there so make sure that you know you're actually keeping up with what they're saying uh, to be respectful of their time too when you're doing things like that if you're just tuning in we're talking about ways that you can better support um, a band's ministry, what they're doing, some ideas that I have. Again, if you have ideas, feel free to share them in the comments. Or if you have stories of something that you've done before that a band told you was really helpful, if you've had something that you've like brought a band, just a conversation that really stuck out to you, feel free to share that in the comments too. We love those stories. The next thing I wanted to talk about is I hear a lot of people asking, how do you actually get involved volunteering at shows? because that's something that's really, really helpful to an artist too. They always are gonna need people to be working their merch table. Um, there's often a need for security and things like that. Usually your best bet for that is to find your local venues, figure out where the concerts are happening, figure out who your local promoters are. And in case you don't know, promoters are the people who basically facilitate bringing a band to your town to play. So promoters handle all of the like venue logistics, they handle um, things like actually getting the word out, things like that. And there are often like promotion companies that do this. And if you can figure out who is bringing bands into your town and then contact them and say, hey, I'm available. If you have shows in this area and want somebody to work merch, put me on your email list, let me know. I'll try and come out and do that. Alternately, you can just connect with the individual venues. Um, I did this when I was in college. Uh, we had a performing arts center on the campus, and the performing arts center hosted Christian concerts all the time. So eventually, I got to a point where I just told them, keep me on your email list and always tell me if you have something coming in, and I'll come and work merch for you. And that's something that's obviously a very practical way that you can help. Um, and in addition to volunteering, once you have those contacts, you can tell venues, these are the kind of bands I want to see coming here. You can tell promoters, these are the kind of people I would be interested in. Because right now it's um, not a lot of people, not as many people as before at the very least, are coming out to concerts in the traditional way. The traditional concert model is getting harder and harder. Um, so for venues to actually know, hey, if I bring this artist here, people are going to come. That helps a lot. Um, Joshua is sharing uh, that Dude Perfect puts some, several bands' music on their videos. They've used Royal Taylor, Manic Drive, and Seventh Time Down. Yes, so that is has been an awesome thing for a lot of bands to get it in front of a lot of other people. And that's, again, the whole idea of get their music out there on social media. Dude Perfect has used the platform that they have to say, hey, here's something that I really like and value. And all of the songs that they've used have been fantastic, too, which helps, of course. Um, Katie is saying that she volunteers with Lighthouse Ministries, and she's also a monthly supporter of Fuse, which are the two biggest groups in Mass... in... can never pronounce that state name right. We're just going to say New England. Um, that is definitely exactly what I was just talking about, and that's awesome that you do that, Katie. I know I have heard of Lighthouse Ministries before. They're great. Uh, they do amazing work up there in an area where, honestly, there's not a lot of Christian music, like, presence. So I love what they do. Um, that's totally a fantastic way to actually get involved is with the organizations who are local to your area and just letting them know that you're available to help out. That's something that, again, it makes a really, really big impact, um, probably beyond what you know, because they kind of rely on people like you to be on board to make events happen, to actually let bands come. And the other thing I wanted to talk about is there's a lot of the time people bring things to bands, uh, whether it's food, you know, you might bring a band like a birthday cake, things like that. And I think a lot of the time people don't really know what kind of things are helpful to bring. Um, and, you know, because you, if you've never toured, then you don't really have much context for that. So I've talked with tons and tons of bands over the years. And so some of the advice that I would give maybe is usually gift cards are actually a lot more helpful than physical goods. That's not universally the case, but think about things like tour buses eat gas like you absolutely would not believe. So if you can even give them like a gas card, that actually is super helpful. Walmart gift cards are super helpful. 
Starbucks gift cards are super helpful because they need to be caffeinated, uh, generally speaking, to actually make it through the touring schedule. So things like that, gift cards to things that are going to be able to meet tangible needs without taking up a lot of extra space on the bus, which is their living room um, while they're out on the road. And, you know, there's only so much room you have on a bus to actually take things like, you know, five big bags of chips or a massive sheet cake. And there are times when those kind of things are helpful too. Um, but just definitely probably put most of your effort into just thinking about things that are actually going to be not really space consuming. Um, another thing that bands almost always need that is space consuming is water. Like bottled water is a constant need of pretty much any band ever. They sweat it out on stage. Um, so if you can bring bottled water to bands, that usually is almost always going to be welcome. Like it'll get, it'll get used up. You would not believe how many bottles of water they tend to go through on the road. So I would say, again, gift cards, water, items that are like a little smaller, and also things that are um, healthy. Because you really don't even think about the fact that usually like bands are in catering and the catering meals are usually not the healthiest. They usually have like cookie trays, things like that. So for artists who like are really trying to actually like feel good while they're out on the road, it gets tricky. So things like carrots, um, hummus, you know, like healthier kinds of chips, crackers, things like that, those can also be kind of like a lifesaver for bands who are actually trying to eat well on the road. But again, think about the fact that they might not have the ability to like have a lot of stuff in the fridge. Their fridge space is very limited. If they're touring in a van, they have no fridge space at all, so you don't want to bring things that are perishable. And those are some pretty simple things, um, just rules of thumb to kind of go by when you're trying to bring a band to something at a show. And if you're just not joining us, we're talking about practical ways that you can support uh, your favorite band's ministry. Um, both spiritually and actually like in tangible ways and you can feel free to share your ideas in the comments below or any stories that you have of things that you have done in the past that you felt like were really helpful. Um, Joshua is here commenting about the fact that a lot of Christian music is getting played in places like clubs, football games, um, that there's like this crossover that's happening like Skillet and Lecrae which is a great example. That's definitely true. That's helping a lot. And that's part of why, if I can bring that full circle, a lot of these bands who are playing in locations like that, who are kind of going outside of the Christian circle, their support network, I mean, it's a little bit thin. Like, uh, they're often going out there kind of, I guess, beyond the safety of the church, beyond the safety of a certain kind of world. And so they need all the support they can get from people like us, who are going to be willing to actually invest in what they're doing. Uh, my friend Lainey just joined us and said it's the right topic for her. That's correct. Lainey is a dear friend of mine, and she is one of the most dedicated band moms ever. She's cared for a lot of bands over the years, and she is very, very well loved by a lot of people for good reason. And she's actually been uh, pretty influential in some of what I've just been saying. Lainey, you might have tuned in right afterwards, but I was just talking about different stuff that uh, people could bring that was helpful. And a lot of it uh, is what you do, basically. Um, one of the other things that I wanted to talk about is when you are coming to a show, you are partnering with a band's ministry, whether you're coming there as in like a longtime fan or a brand new fan, whether you're wearing their t-shirt in public, which by the way is another great way to support them is be a human billboard. I am not opposed to that at all. But when you're at a show and you're surrounded by other fans, how you treat those other fans is basically you participating in what the band is doing. Um, because it reflects back on the band. So basically I think a good rule of thumb is try and treat everybody else around you in the crowd the way that you would treat the band members on stage with the same level of respect, with the same level of kind of deference, the same level of knowing that they have value, that you know you don't want to elbow past somebody who's been waiting for like five hours longer to you to get to the front, you don't want to get grumpy with somebody if you feel like they're in your way. It's just having that kind of patience with people is a way to actually really continue to share uh, the gospel in, again, a, a tangible way because you're out there in the crowd. The band is not going to be out there in the crowd their whole set. You know, you, they're like going to have interaction with people at the end. 
So you get to almost be an ambassador while you're out there in the crowd surrounded by other people. Um, and this can get tricky sometimes because I know that there's like nothing more frustrating than when say you've paid $50 to get into a meet and greet and some person, like some middle schooler, spends the entire time asking questions like where did the band get their name and things like that that like can be irritating to no end to people who are more dedicated. Uh, but even in cases like that, you know, we were all there at one point. So just treating the people around you like they matter um, because that really is, you know, that's what the, the band would want too because as, you know, Christian artists, they're in this position where they're sharing the gospel in a very, very clear way and in a special way, and we get to participate with them in that through how we treat the people who are there to see them. Um, and part of it, too, is, of course, just remembering that to God, if I can get just a little, little pre- Might have lost me for a second there. Apologize for that. My signal might be a little bit sketchy. Um, so what I was trying to say is keep in mind that every single person in the audience is as valuable to the heart of God as the artists on stage. Um, and again, the band's entire ministry is about reaching people. So it's important for us to value those people too. Katie says she has 50 concert shirts. So that is awesome. Uh, I used to have about that many. I've at, I'm at the point where I'm having to like make a quilt of concert t-shirts because a lot of them are like unwearable at this point. I've worn them so much. And the Katie's also sharing here that she had a meet and greet with Ryan Stevenson, who we love. Uh, he's a good friend of NRT. And there was a 13 year old girl there who was the only other person there. Yeah, that's those are the situations that, again, sometimes it's frustrating to get, it's like easy to get just really frustrated and annoyed and kind of um, write them off, but actually, you know, really showing them respect and love is a way of being the gospel and the hands and feet of Christ uh, in a super powerful way. Um, kind of the last thing I wanted to talk about is the spiritual aspect of this, which is that artists who are out there, especially artists who are out there in like places like clubs, um, kind of doing the crossover market, if you will, they are on the front lines of the spiritual advance of the kingdom of God. And when you're on the front lines, you're a lot more vulnerable um, to attack, to arrows from the enemy, to things both practical and spiritual. Um, road life is unbelievably hard. It's incredibly hard to have a marriage and be a touring artist. It's incredibly hard to be a parent. It's incredibly hard to have friendships. Um, artists face a lot personally that we will never see um, just on like a spiritual level. So the more that we can cover them with prayer, the better. Like I don't think it, we could possibly pray enough. You know, at NRT, one of the things that we do all the time is we'll finish up interviews by asking artists, how can we pray for you? That's something we've done for as long as I've ever been on board. And a lot of artists, it takes them off guard because they're not used to being asked that in an interview setting. But a lot of artists also say that it is one of the most crucial things that they could be asked. So as fans, as music listeners, as consumers, we might, you know, we're getting ministered to by these artists on a daily basis and they are pouring themselves at, out for us. So one of the ways that we can kind of return that and minister to them in return is just by keeping them in prayer constantly and not just them but their families um so again it is in unbelievably hard on families when one member of the family is out touring all the time and that's something that honestly like i would just kind of like encourage you next time you're in a signing line ask an artist hey how can i be praying for, for you in the future you know tell them i pray for you all the time do you have any specific requests that i can be lifting up to the Lord next time that I'm thinking about you. And that kind of thing, again, that's a way of us, again, participating in the advance of the kingdom and giving them some measure of protection when they're out there so that they're not just alone. Um, 
I was actually, I'm going to be publishing pretty soon an interview with Stephen Christian, and he was talking about how he thinks, you know, one of the biggest tools of the enemy is to make leaders fall, um, whether it be pastors, whether it be like lead singers of bands. Um, if the enemy can get them isolated and alone and tear them apart, that will in turn damage the faith of so many other people. So it really cannot possibly be overstated the importance of them having prayer support, of them having people who are willing to come alongside them and say what you're doing matters, what you're struggling with matters. We know that even though you're on a stage, you're not a perfect human being and you have struggles too. So that's something again that I would just, it's like my, my big, big thing is whatever else you do to support a band, to pray for them. Um, Lainey's in the comments here, she's talking about Lights Out, which is an organization with, which ministers to traveling musicians. Um, that is run by Dave, who I actually was just hanging out with this past weekend. Uh, the Yes, Lights Out is phenomenal. Uh, they have done a lot of really fantastic work. I also wanted to throw out there a couple of other organizations who do this. One is RIFO, R-Y-F-O. I'm going to put the link to that in the comments. And they are just a massive network that serves and ministers to artists. They have a bunch of different practical things that they do. Um, you can like go to their, their website there to get involved, to figure out how you can actually, again, be a part of what they're doing to help out artists. The other organization that I wanted to throw out there, and again, all the links to this are going to be in the comments, so you can go look this up later and check it out, is Porter's Call. And Porter's Call is based in Nashville, here where I live, and they are an organization that, that provides free counseling to people in the music business. And a lot of people don't understand the importance of that, but again, artists are facing challenges that are even beyond what we might understand or see on a daily basis. Um, and a lot of them are also, you know, not very financially blessed, because to be an artist right now is not an particularly financially lucrative thing. So a lot of them can't afford to get the help that they need when they are, when they have a marriage in crisis, when they're struggling with depression, um, when they have some other trauma that occurs in their life, they're not able to afford the help that they need. So Porter's Call actually provides counseling to artists completely free of charge. And they're a nonprofit, but that means that they are completely dependent on people's donations. So if you're interested, again, the link's there in the comments. And that's another thing that you can check out. And if, for sure, if there are organizations that I'm not aware of, um, again, we've already referenced some great ones, um, feel free to leave the link in the comments here, even after this live broadcast is over, because people are going to be able to go back and watch this afterwards. And I know that there are a lot more than the ones I just threw out there. Those were just the ones that I thought of off the top of my head. I've encountered a bunch more over my years out um, at festivals and concerts. I've heard about more from other artists. So if you have any organization that works to support artists, feel free to, again, just put the link in the comments. I might even make this an article at some point, to be honest, on the site. So feel free to participate in that. Uh, I think that is what I've got for you guys. Those are the main ways that I have thought of, um, except for the obvious one, which is just, you know, bring in bands letters, tell them stories of the way that God has used their ministry in your life. Um, for a long time, I kind of reached this like cynical point where I was like, it doesn't really matter. They hear too many stories every day. And then I started actually talking to artists and they over and over and over again have told me that what keeps them going is hearing from people like us who have had our lives changed through their ministry. So you can never say it enough times. If God has used a band to change your life, if he's used a band to get you through something really difficult, if he's used a song to connect you with God, um, tell the band that. And again, you might not have time in a signing line, so write out a letter and give it to them. They will read them. I don't think I've ever yet met a band who would not read that kind of letter. Um, and those are the kinds of things that they treasure. And when they're questioning uh, their calling, when they're questioning if it's too difficult, um, that, those are the things that they're going to go back to, that God will in turn use in their lives to encourage them. So it's a way for us, again, to minister to those who've been ministering to us. Um, and Lainey is saying this is also go to shows. That's a big one. Again, like I was saying earlier, a lot of people just are not going to shows, and that's incredibly important. And bring your friends with you. Um, that's a way to actually 
do again outreach really like especially if it's like a case where you have a friend who maybe is really struggling with their faith or who is really in a hard place and you bring them with you to a show that again is a way of you participating in what the band is doing um so yeah I, that's definitely can't be overstated enough to just to show up and bring people with you as many people as possible um because it's completely completely like God is still using Christian music to change the world and we get to be a part of that. And that is awesome. And it's an honor. And it's definitely something that whether it be as a fan or as an employee of NRT that I will hope I never take lightly. Um, again, as if you're watching this later, feel free to just share your, uh, your suggestions, your stories in the comments. We'll be going back over and reading those and, interacting with those and if you have any other input um, on organizations that do this share them in the comments too and we'll try and assemble some kind of list based off of all of those you might see me again you might not depends on how the schedule goes if not you will see marcus and kevin again next week they will be getting off the jesus freak cruise this weekend and then returning to normal life probably pretty slowly next week i would imagine um, but in the meantime, thank you guys for sticking it out with me. Uh, again, this is not my usual, so I appreciate you guys being patient with me and also for the conversation. We are nothing uh, without, like the Christian music industry is nothing without the fans and all of us being a part of that. So it's awesome to have this time talking with you guys.